Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopijana Balaba Kiribana Dari Gopijana Balaba Kiribana Dari Chasurananda, Brajjana Ranjana, Chasurananda, Brajjana Ranjana, Jamuniti Ravanatari. Jamuna tira bana tari Jamuna tira bana tari Jairaro marava kunda bihari Gopi jana bala ba kiri bana dari Jasura nandana braja jana ranjana Chamuna tira bana Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
Hare Krishna, 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 Jaya Radha Madhava Kunda Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunda Bihari Jai Um Shabad Paramahansa Padiba Jukacharya Siddha Dashishma Dizavan Grace Abhai Chiran Bhukti Vedanta Sai Maharaj Shri Prabhupada Ki Iskan BBT Founder Vichar Jagu Guru Shri Prabhupada Ki Ananta Gauda Vaishnam Brinda Ki Nama Char Shri Haridas Thakur Ki Prem Shri Guru Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Dvaita Gadara Shri Vasari Guru Bhakta Brinda Ki Sri Sri Radha Krishna Guru Gopinath Shama Kundu Radha Kundu Giri Govardhan ki, Brindavan dam ki, Matur dam ki, Dwaka dam ki, Navadi dam ki, Jaganapuri dam ki, Chamuna mai ki, Ganga mai ki, Tulsi Maharani ki, Bhakti Devi ki, Sambeda Bhakti Vindi ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, Sri Siddhartha Giridhara ki, Sri Krishna San Kirtana Jaga ki, Gopri Manandi. All glories to the sum of devotees. All glories to the sum of devotees. All glories to the sum of devotees. All glories to divine lotus seed, the Sri Sri Guru and Gauranga. Krishna Svadamo Pagate Damaganadi Bisaha Kalanda Sada Shamesha Parano Kona Nodita Narana Namaskachanam Chaivam Narotama Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jayamu Dirayet The Bhagavatam is brilliant as the sun. It is arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna to his own abode, accompanied with knowledge, religion, etc. Person who have lost their vision to the dense darkness, darkness of the age of Kali shall get light out of this Purana. Before beginning our study of the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, we should first offer respects to the personality of God in Narayan, to the Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, the goddess of living mother, Saraswati, the author, Srila Vyasadeva, and my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we are on the fourth canto, chapter 25, text 17, and we're talking about, actually it's Narada Muni speaking to King Prachini Barishat with an analogy with the living entity actually Maharaj Prachini Barishat as the enjoyer, Paranjan. So that, that we're unfolding that analogy. Puryas tu bhayo bhavane divya druma latakule nadad vihangali kula Kolahala Chalashaye Puryas to Bayo Bhavani Divya Druma Latakule Nadad Vihangali Kula Kolahala Jalashaye Puryas tu bayu pavane Divya druma latakule Nadad vihangali kula Kulahala jalashaye 
Puryas to Bayo Bhavane Divya Druma Latakule Nadad Vihangali Kula Kula Hala Jalashaye Puryas to Bayo Bhavane Divya Druma Latakule Nadad Vihangali Kula Kula Hala Jalashaye Puryas to Bayo Pavane Purya of that town to then Paya Apavane in an outside garden. Divya, very nice. Druma, trees. Lata, creepers. Akule, filled with. Nadat, vibrating. Vihanga, birds. Ali, bees. Kula, groups of. Kala hala humming jala ashaye with a lake and the translation on the outskirts of that city were many beautiful trees and creepers encircling a nice lake also surrounding that lake were many groups of birds and bees that were always chanting and humming all say you say outside uh, on the outskirts of that city were many beautiful trees and creepers encircling a nice lake. Also surrounding that lake were many groups of birds and bees that were always chanting and humming. Sounds great, doesn't it? Jeez. Since the body is a great city, there must be various arrangements such as lakes and gardens for sense enjoyment. Of the various parts of the body, those which incite sexual impulses are referred to indirectly. Because the body has genitals, when the living entity attains the right age, be he a man or woman, he becomes agitated by the sex impulse. As long as one remains a child, he's not agitated by seeing a beautiful woman. Although the sense organs are present, unless the age is ripe, there is no sex impulse. The favorable conditions surrounding the sex impulse are compared here to a garden or a nice solitary park. When one sees the opposite sex, naturally the sex impulse increases. It is said that if a man in a solitary place does not become agitated upon seeing a woman, he is considered to be a brahmacharya. But this practice is, not, is almost impossible. The sex impulse is so strong that even by seeing touching, talking, coming in contact with, or even thinking about the opposite sex, even in so many subtle ways, one becomes sexually impelled. Consequently, a brahmachari or sannyasi is prohibited to associate with women, especially in a secret place. The Shastra enjoins that one should not even talk to a woman in a secret place, even if she happens to be one's own daughter, sister, or mother. The sex impulse is so strong that even if one is very learned, he becomes agitated in such circumstances. If this is the case, how can a young man in a nice park remain calm and quiet after seeing a beautiful woman? Once again, I'm going to read the verse. On the outskirts of that city were many beautiful trees and creepers encircling a nice lake. Also surrounding that lake were many groups of birds and bees. They were always chanting and humming. 
So it sounds very wonderful. And we have the, uh, uh, we hear from uh, many pious religionists that God has made this world for us to enjoy. There's beautiful sunsets and Lake Como in Italy and crystal clear Caribbean water and beautiful breezes. There's so many nice things. God's made this world. You, you don't appreciate the beauty of God's creation. Of course, actually we do, but you hear this. Um, and Prabhupada quotes Tagore, the poet who won the Nobel Peace Prize, amazingly enough. Does anyone remember Tagore's, well, how Prabhupada quotes the poet Tagore? Tagore says, the most beautiful creation of God is a woman. Prophet points out that even the, <laughs> the beady wally on the corner knows <laughs> will say the same thing. It's not a profound philosophical statement. So if, and if you watch, it talks about how Puranjan is enjoying this city, of not just enjoying the body and checking it out, you know, you go to the different parks and the different gates and you check everything out and enjoy in this way and that. And if you've ever seen a little kid, you know how they're just skipping down the street? They're just having a great time with their body. They, oh, it flops like this and it flips like this and I can do this. And they're just having a, a festival uh, enjoying the body. Um, so what is the intelligent question? If God has made this world for us to enjoy, then what's a sober analysis, comment? This is the best he could do? I had a, it stayed, obviously it stayed with me. So this has to be, I was doing book distribution in Michigan. So it must have been 73, 74. And we were out in front of a, uh, it, was, it was a concert. And there was the, you know, the entrance of the concert hall. And then there was the, whatever, plaza out in front. And everybody's lined up there getting their tickets and milling around. And we, that's where we were doing books. It was fantastic. It's a nice venue. Um, uh, anyway, called Cobalt Theater. And then in front of it, there's the parking lot and a driveway. Now, the layout matters because... There was a guy driving up and down um, on that driveway in front of that where everyone was standing. We were also there you know, before you go into the hall. Everyone's milling around and getting their tickets and chit-chatting and doing whatever they're doing. And, uh, you know, whatever it was, a couple hundred, maybe even a couple thousand people. And this guy was riding a, you know, a big Harley. And he had the long blonde hair and the vest with no sleeves, so the big you know, guns as they call them, the big muscles, and he was a handsome looking guy. But that's not complete. Motorcycle, you know, the, the, the uh, power machine and, and the big bronze god on top of it. What else needs to be there? Oh, it has to be a beautiful girl. And there was, quite frankly, a beautiful girl. You know, everything in all the right places and blonde hair waving. And I mean, they were idyllic. And to show off, he was popping, you know, they call it popping a wheelie. I don't know what they call it nowadays. But, you know, you lift up the bike and it'll ride on. So he was doing a bunch of wheelies and she was wrapped around his strong body. And all the women were thinking, gee, if I had a guy like that. And all the men were thinking, gee, if I had a woman like that. And, and he knew what they were thinking and she knew what they were thinking. And they were on top of the world. But what happened, I swear to you, he popped open the, the motorcycle and it went, you know, you have to balance the thing, you know. And if, you, if, you know, if she leans back or you pull it up too high, whew, and the bike fell over. And, of course, no helmets, you know, in those days, you know. And I swear to you, Prabhu's, don't want to spoil your breakfast, but her head split open. It looked exactly if you'd thrown a cantaloupe on the ground. You know, with all the seeds and everything, it looked exactly like, half was there, and the back half looked like a cantaloupe. And let me tell you, the mood changed. Everything was ah! so within a second. And I don't mean to be too graphic, but the uh, 
And I was hoping Vaikuntha would be here. I'm sure he's doing something very, more worthwhile. But I was, um, uh, he and I were in Jamaica, and we were selling paintings, you know, and we were supporting the temple and book distribution, so many things, and maintained our families. So it was a little business we had. So, uh, and it's hard work, and it, it, was, it was hot, and hard work, and you know, you get a, your back gets thrown out, lugging around the sample bag and all this stuff. It's tough work. Uh, I don't recommend it. Although we, it's another story. We did have some nice experiences. Um, but I'd seen a poster. Every now and then, in, if we were in the Caribbean or something, we'd go swimming, especially I have a horrible back. If I can go swimming, so, you know, it's too hot, we take a little break. You know, you have a little break, you go swimming, you know, it's, you're right there in the Caribbean, you know, and, shower off and you're back at it and refreshed so we saw a poster i saw a poster and vike had seen it too it was, it was supposed to be the best beach in jamaica called boston beach and i'm telling you Prabhu's, white sand crystal clear water the kind you can see right through you can see you know 30 feet below you can see the fish and you know the palm trees were swaying there was on top of it there was a freshwater river flowing right into it. I mean, it looked idyllic. So, you know, Vike and I were driving to our next appointment. We don't have to be there for a couple hours. We're going to take Bashadam somewhere. You know, we've got our, and we saw a sign, Boston Beach. We said, hey, you know, two miles, Boston. Well, let's cruise down there. We'll go for a swim, have Bashadam, and go back at it refreshed. We drove down there. Looked great on the postcard. First off, it was super hot super humid that water that river was full of raw sewage so the place smelled horrible the beautiful ocean you know razor sharp uh, coral you couldn't go out into it and the sand that white sand was full of sand fleas and on top it off Jamaica oh you know you know, Jaman and, and our Rastafarian friends, it's rife with crime. You know, we went to put our a, 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 a guy at a coconut stand came and said, oh man, don't leave anything there. It'll be gone before you know it. Don't, don't leave anything on the beach. You know, lock up your car, take your keys with you. If you leave your keys on the beach, they'll steal your car. So it was just the whole thing. Well, fight. And I said, forget it, man. We just <laughs> took a shot him in the car. But it looked good. That's my point. So we need to be intelligent. Um, back to these kids enjoying the body. Uh, if you think about it, you ask, I've mentioned this before, but we have some fresh faces. I'm going to mention it again. <coughs> ask a young child how old you are. What will they say? Always a half. I'm four and a half. I'm four and three quarters. I'm almost five. I mean, they're, they, they are, they're leaning forward. They're leaning forward. They want to get older. They want to get older. They don't want to be a kid anymore. They want to get older. They want to get older. Every teenager wants to, you know, when can I drink? When can I drive a car? I want to get older. When can I vote? When can I move out of the house and be independent? They're looking forward. They're looking forward. So they're not happy with their, with their age. They want to get older, older, older. Now, on the other side of the coin, ask somebody who's 80. How old are you? Tell them, let me guess. And if he says, oh, let me guess. If everybody, because people sometimes they ask you to guess their age, always guess younger. I mean, if it's a kid, always guess older. If you got, if you got a kid, say, oh, I thought you were eight. If they were six, you watch immediately, every time, their chest will swell. They'll get a you know, pep in their step and some swagger. Ha try, it if, try, try this at home. Anybody who's older, and sometimes they say, how old am I? You just, oh, you can guess? Always guess younger. Significantly, not enough to make it look foolish, but you know, five years younger. Oh, they're, they, it's like the best compliment. It's like telling somebody, oh, you must have lost weight. You know? They feel so much happier. You know? So I've studied the matter carefully. And they want to get the... the the young people want to get older, 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 older till about 21, 22, 23. Then they don't want to get older. And they want to get, the old folks want to get younger, younger, younger. It goes down to about 30. So really, you could say from 
let's be generous, from 20 to 30, 10 years, that okay, I mean, that doesn't, disease, you know, all the other miseries caused by other living entities, miseries caused by the mind, miseries caused by the material nature. Well, forget all that. Just living in this city of nine gates. Suppose you live an average 80 years, 70 years. It means 10 years only are you, that means six sevenths of your existence in that body, you're dissatisfied just on that alone. So what is it, this city of nine gates? I was thinking of a couple other things. What do we call, there's different names for this body. Now one is a city of nine gates. What else in our Vedic view do they call the body? What's another analogy the body is compared to? What would you say? Tabernacle's okay, that, but what's another? It's compared to a vehicle. It's compared to a chariot. It's compared to? A bag. Ah, that's the one I was looking for also. It's compared to a bag. Who compares it to a bag other than Dravida Prabhu? Who says? It's a, fa it's a famous statement in Krishna book. Oh, Krishna says it, but who else says it? What are the names of the deities in Los Angeles? Ah, so how does Rukmini describe the body? Oh, it's graphic. You know, a bag of blood, mucus, stool, urine. And then she adds a very poetic touch at the end. What's it? Decorated with a mustache. It's got a nice little mustache. Oh, but what is it really, you know? What do they say? Beauty's only skin deep? Literally. So... Amongst all the other things, if you, I guess I'll say it this way, because um, I was thinking about it. The perception is not really, perception, perce seeing is not reality. Emotion is reality, especially in the age of Kali. I'll give you an example. Um, suppose somebody, I forget where I was, but they had a few seashells on their counter you know, on their kitchen counter, the window is there, there's some seashells. And the maid was cleaning the house, threw out the seashells, thought they were useless. The person was to completely search through the trash, you know, went out to the dumpster, climbed in the dumpster to find these little seashells. Why? Those seashells were from her, she'd had those for 40 years from when she went on her honeymoon in Bali. People have little dried flowers. You ever seen a, you know, little dried flowers in a book? There's so many wild flowers. What's, you know, you throw, oh no, because though that was my wedding bouquet. You know, or whatever, whatever it is. So that it's an insignificant thing, but freighted with emotion, it becomes very profound. That, would, that really has no value. It's just dust, sand. It's insignificant. But because it's freighted with emotion, Oh, it becomes very important. So the Bhagavatam, it, 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 what is it? Omagyana Temarandasya. The Bhagavatam is meant to wake us up. Here we're being, wake up. It's a bag. Because we're emotionally attached to it. Because it gives us a little pleasure or you scratch it in this way or that way. Prabhupada describes the senses that uh, an elephant, anyone know, other than Dravida and Vijay, I could systematically go to scratch out Balaram too, in Ramapati. But anyone know, um, in an elephant, what sense is particularly strong in our Vedic analogy? Sex. We'll get the smell in a minute. And prob what example, Dravida, you can say, what example does. A Prabhupada give, the proving that sex, the elephant, you know, you know like they say, where does the two-ton elephant sit? Anywhere he wants. And I, I remember trying, trying to move uh, Gulab Kali when she was, even when she was, a, you know, when she was a baby. Where, she went where she wanted to go. We, we were in a boat one time with, um, uh, oh, I've forgotten his name. Uh, yeah, Vipramukim. He took care of her when he was a baby. 
And, you know, elephants, they don't forget. They're very, you know, I don't want to get too far lost on that. But to make it short, it's a little shorter. Uh, we were in a boat, and we were going to Navadweep. And she saw him. She was going along, you know, book to sit out the marg. She broke off the marg, off, off the road, came down into the field, came down the steps of the ghat. She was going to get in the boat with him. <laughs> oh, my God. We've had to throw Maharaj out. We had to throw him out of the boat. Cause she, you know, we all would have gone down, you know. She was seeing her buddy. She wanted to climb in, you know. So, uh, but sex attraction. So how do they catch them? They dig a pit. They get a beautiful she-elephant. Bangles, cudgel, I don't know, bow in her tail. I don't know exactly what the exact etiquette of the thing is. And she lures him, and he becomes completely forgets everything. Because elephants are extremely intelligent animals. But blinded by sex, falls into a pit, and they get captured. And actually, they starve him, and then they feed him, and they do so many things. And eventually, he becomes submissive. And after he becomes submissive, then they let him out. And they teach him how to work. But he becomes captured by sex. Otherwise, there's no way you're going to capture that elephant. Now, uh, anyone know an example for hearing? What animal, other than Dravida Prabhu, what animal becomes captured by another sense is very strong? Deer. The deer. And what is the, what is it, what, what, what happens? It becomes stunned. It plays, the, the, it stops to listen to the flute. Because, you know, a moving arch, if you can't, object you can't, especially bow and arrow, you can't hit it. I mean, they call themselves sportsmen. Now they got those high-powered rifle, rifles with a telephone, you know, and a laser. Pole. What kind of? What's the sport in that? You blow poor Bambi out of the forest, you know. But the, um, you know, a bow and arrow. I'm not advocating it, but saying bow and an arrow, it's not so easy to hit a moving thing. So they play the flute, and it, it comes out of the forest and stops, and then it's shot. So in an elephant, one sense is strong sex. I, I, in a, a, a deer. Uh, hearing is very strong. What's another? What's smelling? What's animal? But entity. The bee, because it comes out to the lotus, and the lotus opens up in the daytime, and the bee comes and smells it, and then the lotus comes, and he becomes captured. So in this way, we could go to Prabhupada says that the, the, the uh, bug, there's, there's a, uh, what are they called? The wally bug. Yeah, the wally bug? They call it in Delhi, Prabhupada says Diwali bug. And they fly towards the light. So Prabhupada said for sightseeing. So they were attracted by the light. So uh, in each of those entities, we can see how they become captured and lose their life or become slaves by the one strong sense. But Prabhupada says, what is our condition in the human form of life? All the senses are strong. So imagine what a dangerous position we are. And because of that attachment, Oh, that's what I wanted to say. What is, we, we mentioned how the body's, the body's a, uh, like a chariot, it's like a bag, it's like a sock. Oh, it's also compared to a cocoon. Why is the body compared to a cocoon? Mm -hmm. What happens to the worm in the cocoon? You got it, my friend. He wi weaves that nice cocoon. Hey, cozy, comfy, silk blanket. But because of that cocoon, the way they make silk is you take that little cocoon and they throw it in boiling water. It kills the worm and the silk unravels. So, so it's compared to a cocoon. We're wrapped in this body and all of our friends and all of our accoutrements and, you know, but it's just a cocoon and death comes and takes us. So it's compared to a cocoon. It's compared to a vehicle. It's compared to a city of nine gates. So many things. A bag. Decorated with a mustache, foul smells. But there's one other thing that the body's compared to. There's a positive, other than Dravida. Okay, but I will, okay, that's true, that's true. You're on the right track. But in the Bhagavatam, it's compared to a boat that can sail over, a sturdy boat. You need the charts of the Vedas, you need the captain of a spiritual master, you need favorable breezes, so many things. But you need that strong boat. It's a strong boat that can cross over Martya Loka. So, but that strong boat, instead, because of the strength of the senses and that emotional attachment, we completely lose sight of what the body's meant to. And we spend all our time just dancing like a fool uh, it titillating for the senses. So, 
I guess we should get close to ending, but I wanted to say one other thing. Um, well, I guess I'll just say this, because um, it is time and I got to go. The... It takes effort. Prabhupada says, how do you measure a person's strength? Now, one would say, you know, you know, sexual prowess. How many women can you seduce? And, you know, a harem and, and you know, how many, you know, whatever it is. Even now you've got those renegade Mormons who have multiple wives, you know, polygamy. So it's considered, a, a, you know, Muslims, what are they, when they get to, I don't know, I'm probably offending people, but they say, when the whole, when you go to heaven, what do you get? I thought it was seven. Is it 72? It's, huh? 72. Jeez, man. I'll tell you something. Anyone who's been actually married? Sure. That's pretty funny. But anybody who's been married, you know, uh, I mean, one wife is enough constantly, you know. And, and it's true for, me, for uh, it's an it's a, it's a equal gender analogy. They got the man with so many demands and nagging and this and that. that you know, one husband's a handful and a pain in the neck. Who wants more than one? You know, what is the bangles all banging into each other? And ultimately, you, you, you know, it's, even there's two bangle, they're but bangy, you know, enlightened from the natural path. You think you got trouble? Anybody have trouble dealing with their mind? I mean, I hey, I'll own up to it. How am I going to be happy by adding another mind to my mind? If I take trouble and multiply it by two, do I have less trouble? Well, okay, we're married. I'm frightened with my wife. If we have some kids, that will solve it. So trouble times trouble times more trouble equals peace? Help me out with that. So 72 virgins, no, no thanks, you know? Who wants it? Uh, I remember saying, our Dharnidar Krishna, you know our Dharnidar Krishna Prabhu. Um, we were at a Gujarati, hi, Bobaji, he's got to go for a class. I was at a Gujarati wedding, and it could have been any wedding. It had so many Indian weddings, and it's a nice thing on one hand. You know, the guy comes riding in on the horse, you know, with a big turban and brrrm, they got the big drums and everything. I saw one guy riding, come riding in on a horse, you know, in front of the hotel or wherever, the wedding hall or whatever it is, you know. And the, 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 they have musicians, brrrm, they hit the drums, scared the horse, zing, took off. <laughs> they had to get in a car, drive back, find the horse, find the guy, bring him back. Was, was, you know, he's a bit ruffled after the thing. But anyway... This was, you know, they're ever standing out there and they're all singing whatever songs and dancing and they're banging on the sticks and the brum with the drum, you know. And the guy comes riding in the horse with a big crown. Darnidar. And his wife is nice. She's a devotee. Motley T. Davis is a nice, you know. But still, yeah, he turned to me and said, King for a day, which he was. And then he turned to me and said quietly, Slave for the rest of his life. I said, way to go, darn it, are spoken as a true householder. And it applies for the women. I'm not just picking on women. It's true for the, they got, they're stuck with this bonehead man, you know. So, the, there's two types of strength. There's material strength, which means prowess, how to enjoy this world. But, the Paranjana story, how does the story end? We're going to find out. And it's, and it's described as a very old story. It's the same old story. It ends the same way. The guard of the city is Chan Vega with 360 soldiers. What does that represent? Time. It's also the... the, the Serpent, his life heirs is another thing. Oh, no, he's being, I'm sorry, he's being attacked. The city with nine gates is being attacked by Chan Vega, which is time with 360 soldiers, which is that, you know, 365 years. Veda's a different calendar. 
a little bit different. So it all ends the same. What is Shakespeare? Here lies so and so, sans teeth, sans hair, sans, you know, sans everything. You got to give it all up. So the, the simple point is instead of being intoxicated, that which actually has no potency, like the shells or the dried seeds, it's the only the emotional attachment, these stale senses. But because we, they, we think it's a medium of real enjoyment, when the Bhagavatam is free from that emotion. The Bhagavatam is as it is, you know, Bhagavad Gita as it is. Now Prabhupada uses that in the context of not being twisted or distorted or added or subtracted. But it's also the naked truth, the bare truth, as it is, unvarnished truth. So Bhagavatam is giving us unvarnished truth. It all ends the same. It all ends old and miserable. So whatever your strength, material strength, it will fade. What's the other type of strength, Prabhupada says? What is another measure of strength? What is a Brahmin's measure of strength? Tolerance. So sex attraction is going to be, and it's the big one. But if, you, if we can learn to tolerate having the intelligence, where does this end? Walk yourself down the path. My daughter, I, forget, I was some years ago, and we'll end in a few minutes, but we started late. Um, my daughter, I forget where we were. We were at some wedding. And this is in my household days. We were at some wedding, and the, my, you know, I'm the uncle I know. I've got my nieces, and, you know, we're all, the, they were all there, and they were all talking. And the girl who was getting married, uh, she was talking how she really hadn't eaten anything other than some juice for the last 10 days. Why? So she could look good in the wedding dress. And they were all talking about it. They were all saying, oh, man, I did this. and that. So all the, they were joking, you know. They said, oh, I had, I had plenty of pictures because the first thing, they talk about a honeymoon. They said, the first thing I did was take off that dress, start eating. So you see the pictures. And you see these Indian guys, they get married. You see them a year later, poof, they've puffed up. That's it. They've gained 20 pounds. Same thing happens with them, poof, you know. Hey, I hooked a guy, I hooked a girl. I can throw care to the wind and stuff my fat face. Boom, they puff out, you know. So how long does it last to, to be intelligent? And then ultimately, my favorite, one of my favorite lines of poetry from uh, who was our friend Dylan Thomas, who died of cirrhosis of the liver, pickled himself, drunk himself to death. Do not go gently into that long good night, but rage, rage, rage against the dimming of the light. You're getting old. The light is dimming. Fight it till the last minute. What fight? You're going to lose. Nobody wins that fight. However long you, you know, you Botox or whatever you do, it's all going to fall apart. So the, it's an old story, Parunjan story. It all ends the same. So, that fight, the strength, is to resist the senses and resist sexes, sex drive, which is the big one. And guess what? It becomes easier. How do you get rid of an unwanted guest? You don't feed them. So, frankly, you're all young men, except for Ed and I. And you're young at heart, but spiritually mature. It gets easier. You just, you just waste your life, get completely entangled. It gets easier. Yamuna Charya says, when I think of, and ultimately the real thing, all of the senses, and this is the last thing I'm going to say, because it, it kind of hopefully ties it together a bit. All of the senses are raging. If I have, and the sages are compared to snakes, poisonous, they bite. So if I take a bunch of snakes and throw them in a basket, put a lid on it, what happens to those snakes? Alex, big basket, throw the snakes inside. They're dangerous running around. I put them, they quiet down, isn't it? Stop hissing. Problem solved? What do you think, Buck, Alex? What happens if you take the lid off and stick your head in there? 
they'll bite. They, they may be subdued, but they're just waiting for the right opportunity. So what is the Vaishnava analogy? What do we do with the senses? What's it compared? How we're devoted? We have our bodies. You break the fangs, then they can't bite. So what is that breaking the fangs? The fangs, the serpents, senses, serpents, biting and poisoning, break the fangs, freed. So what is breaking the hold of the senses, the poisonous bite? We engage them in the service of the deities. It's one of the reasons deity worship is so important. You smell the nice incense, you taste the nice prasadam, you want to see, instead of decorating yourself in what's the latest fashion, Tadit was telling me, you know what the, fashion, the color of the year is? Uh, co this year, every year has a color. It's announced, yeah, there's a color of the year, every year. Did you know what the color of the year is, Ram? <laughs> you have to go out and buy dhotis with the right stripe, buddy, get with the program, you know? Sa not this year. It's one year saffron was. I th she told me it's, it's mint green is the color of the year. It was orange last year. Now it's mint green, color of the year. So instead of trying to keep up with a fashion, you got to keep your, you know, I, we can what that whole circus is, making the money and losing the weight and you just, you know, just decorate the deities. You decorate the deities beautifully. Everyone's satisfied. All that you think, oh, jeez, how beautiful Radhagir and Hari look. So in this way, all of the senses, hearing nice kata about Krishna, instead of hearing somebody else glorified and you just become envious. So my simple point is that by the process of devotional service, that strength to stay engaged in devotional service, all the senses become pacified, subdued, and then enlivened. To the point, one that will end on a prophet story. We were in, um, because everyone's agitated by sex desire. Akbar asked Birbal, his advisor, he said, how long does sex, you know, it's a lot of work, you know, to maintain the whole gustupa, whatever it's called, the, the, the money and the, and the, you know, you the, to, you got to have the house, you got to have the uh, gifts, you got to, you all, you know, to maintain that beautiful girl, to get a beautiful girl and maintain her, you got to be good looking and you got to have money. You got to have, a, as they used to say in the old song, you got to have a whole lot of spending money. Otherwise, you're not getting her. She's going with the other guy who's got the money, you know. So, rather than all of that, uh, what was I? Ah, that freedom to become free from that and what that happiness is. Um, Prabhupada was in the Detroit, when we were buying that Detroit mansion. And in the front hall of the Detroit mansion, there was this two, f two stories tall. So it's a you know, two story lobby and a winding staircase in the temple room. And there was a huge mural done French Impressionist style. Naked women bathing. All the sannyasis, and rightly so, and the how they were, you know, and the Prabhupada was charming and, and, be, and, and hypnotizing the owner. Prabhupada stopped the king, looked and said, very nicely done. <laughs> Completely undisturbed, un, you know, bothered by the whole thing. So that is actual freedom. That is actual strength. And that, oh, Akbar. I didn't finish on Akbar. So Akbar's, uh, when do you become free? Because it's a pain in the neck being you know, stuck and harassed and spurred and agitated by this thing. So Akbar said, how long does it last? When am I going to get relief from this? Birbal says it lasts even up to the deathbed. Akbar said, I don't believe it. Birbal said, I'll show you. And Akbar had enough faith in you, Birbal. Okay, let's see. So Birbal, some time passed. Birbal came, said, come immediately and bring your wife. I, I bring, I'll bring your wife. Bring your beauty. He had a young daughter, a beautiful princess. You, you bring your beautiful princess and you come with me. So they went. They went to the house of a dying man. The man is dying. Akbar Rajarshi. He was actually a very pious, noble, educated king. So the noble king was there. Birbal, saintly Brahman, was there. Where was the man on the deathbed looking? He was just checking out the beautiful girl. 
at the time of death. But to become free from that by engagement in Krishna's devotional service, by deity worship, by sankirtan, by working hard. We should work hard. When you put your head on the pillow, you should go to sleep. It's not that you lie there, oh, you know. We should have worked hard. So anyway, this is the beauty of devotional service. We should not, and this is the message from this Paranjan story, to not be captivated by the senses, but have real strength. Be a hero, a real hero. Okay, all glories to Prabhupada. All right, Krishna.